um, is going to be my f my solo anchorage and first time I'm going to film it so <laughs> I'm still very super nervous very nervous um, I'm going to set this up and hopefully by then the tide will be kind of like neutral so I will only have the wind but there is a tide and a tide turns quite fast and uh, so yeah let's let's get started I'm going to see where I can put you guys up we are two crazies from South Africa, that's Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. Okay, the water is running. Let me switch on these things. Oh, it's already 13 knots of wind. <laughs> oh, yay, yay. Um, and the wind is coming straight forward. So the first thing I'm going to do is straighten the, the chain. And this is what I'm going to do with this. I'm just waiting for the child daughter. Is I'm going to go backwards on the engine slowly till we reach the chain I think we should be there I can see the bow is changing quite fast okay short daughter is up <coughs> This is going to be not as easy, but um, the seaweed is still coming this way, so the current is this way, the wind is this way, so I'm, I'm, I've got it lucky, <laughs> I got it lucky, wind is dead ahead. Um, I'm going to zoom in on a chart and go to and it says 45 meters, I, that's the chain that I put out, I'm just going to make sure. A little bit of idle speed, you're not really moving. Okay, so the bridle is now straight. I'm going to flip the bridle off a little bit. And one thing I'm going to do now, I just want to make sure that we don't because as the chain drops, it's now stiff. As the chain drops, it pulls Sisu forward. So I just want to make sure that we stay on one position. Now I'm going to use wind vane. The wind vane is now in the direction of the wind. Lucky for me, because this is the first one. I put it on video. Um, the previous times I did it alone. Pietro is not here. It's much easier if Pietro is here. I think we drifted two meters. I'm just going to do a little bit backwards. Okay, so if you're if you're against the current, or the wind is coming from that direction and the current is pulling you there, so the anchor is on that direction. So we have now two directions. Then take note of the direction of the wind, the apparent wind angle, in my case it's zero, but if it's say 20 or 30 or even 40, like yesterday it was 120, it's not easy. Then you look at the side, if the wind is coming from that way, the power is going to be pushed off that way, and then your chain will go under that hull there, which you don't want. So then you only use one engine to go forward slowly. You have to, you have to go forward as fast as the gypsy can bring up the chain but not so slow that the engine cannot have rudder control so you have to go fast enough <laughs> and this is where the oh we're moving you see we're moving oh the wind is shifting okay so we're going to do that then <laughs> oh. okay are you guys ready I'm not ready. Uh, 
Okay, I'm 45 meters. I know the chain is still straight. And the reason why you want this chain straight, because if you need to chase it, look me, I'm, I'm shaking. If the chain is not straight, then you need to run, hunt for the chain like this and this and this. So, oh my goodness. We are not going in the right direction. Okay, you see the current. We're going to have trouble. Okay, I'm going to do now what I said I'm going to do. So I have to have enough oh, first wind vane, and I'm going to put wind vane, and I look at my my wind instrument and I see the parent wind is six degrees so we want to keep it in six degrees so I'm going to keep it like that and I'm going to go a little bit forward but enough that it has command and I'm going to go run forward so over here I'm going to keep the lock up but if something does go wrong then I have I have at least it will lock the chain and not drop the gypsy. And I need to get the bridle off. <laughs> I see we are start moving a little bit away from the wind. Turned a lot. I'm going to give this one much more out of control. And I'm going to get closer to the wind. The wind is shifting. Anchor is that way. <laughs> My God, it goes goodness. So I need to do this over again. I need to go forward as well. Okay, so now it's 60 degrees. Wind vane at 60. Aeroplane. didn't work. I was too slow. Fifteen meters to go. Five meters deep. So we one two three. Scope is now one two three. Okay. Now the problem where I'm going now the direction I'm going now is that these boats so I need to make sure 30 degrees 30 degrees let's try this one so the bow is going to be pushed off so I'm just going to put that one
man the wind is fluctuating a lot <laughs> like I said okay 17 meters oh, stand by <laughs> it will not turn okay this way is much better okay I'm going to put the wind vane now on this side Ooh. Closer, closer. Okay, let's try again. Just want to put a quick insert here that the moment your 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 anchor chain is lifting your shank up, your anchor is starting is going to start to drag. So try to stay keep the boat at one position um, so that the anchor doesn't start to drag on the surface of the of of the ground if it's just sand it's fine if it's just mud it's fine but the moment you get into coral heads or something like that it might hook under the coral head and then you can get stuck or a chain or a wreck sometimes there's wrecks in the in a anchorage and if the anchorage is getting crowded you might be forced to anchor close to a wreck so it will also get caught into the wreck um, so just re keep in mind that the moment your scope is less than one to three actually when it's already around one to three you can start dragging anchor on the bottom of, of, of the ground uh, of the anchorage so just make sure to keep that in mind Wow, okay, that chain that again, this was going too fast, but the wind changed, but the anchor stayed to, to the starboard side. But at least we were, the scope was now like that, so it was okay. I managed to get it up. Okay, now for anchor drop. <laughs> Let's see how that's going to work. Anchoring is a little bit easier, <laughs> well, relatively easier because. I can just set this thing here for how much we need to let out for the scope and it will let it out. Uh, the anchor is already opened up, the little lock is opened. Um, I just need now to find the anchor spot. I see there's one guy there and I know he doesn't like boats close to him. It's now I think we, we're both solo sailors now and we've seen each other quite often at the same anchorage. <laughs> Seems like we're watching the weather. Um, over here it's pretty deep so I would like to go a little bit shallower and the current is coming from that way the, and if I look at him the wind is that way so it seems like the wind has priority so I'm looking at the other boats just like normal anchoring but now the only thing is I need to drop the anchor myself and the tricky spot comes in when you Need to tie the bridle if you tie the bridle you have to make sure that that the boat is not swinging away from the anchor so that the chain goes under the bow um, you know all all those things so <laughs> and that's why you tie the bridle with your hands there in the bridle in the anchor locker okay i think the last time we went somewhere here the wind is going to come from that direction so the closer we are here the better yeah, so that's the guy that you don't want to mess with anchorage <laughs> so I need to figure out a way so I'm going to point us first into the wind and then see how that works out okay the wind is now 100% um, oh, it's the same as that how is that the current go? so I'm checking the references around me to make sure I'm standing still 
moving a little bit backwards. So there is a current. I cannot see the current. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to go to zero and I check for references. Keep the bow. And we're so close to that guy, he's going to chase us again. Let me go forward a little bit. Just if we got too close to that guy. So the wheel is now locked so that I can have maneuverability just with the engines. I'm looking now here. I'm looking at the chart and yeah, I can see the, the white. You guys can check here. See those, that white line? That's the shallow water. So I need to make sure that we're not going to swing into that. Be far enough from that guy. A little boats around me. I'm still moving forward. Huh. Okay, there we go. So I'm start dropping the anchor. Everything looks good. Okay, it's running. I'm putting my drop point here. I'm going in reverse as well, okay, and then say go to, <coughs> and I'm not going to go too fast, because I'm going to allow CC to actually drift. Okay, everything looks good. Just bridle time. Let me take this camera as well. And you guys must check that we don't move in down the wind or something like that. The bow should not move, make sure. <laughs> See the bows moving. I'm locking the the bow is moving too fast, too much. Oh, the bow is moving. You guys did not see it. You should shout, comment down below. Say the bow is moving. I'm going to go more or less closer to the, the current. It's actually very strong. We did not expect that. Okay, let me try again. So I'm using this, this line. The soft shackle that we talk about around the chain is this one. So there's a soft shackle thing. This is a dyneema line. So I just like wrap it up and then put it in itself. And then you just you just tie or um, whip it there. So, and it still goes quite a far end in. But because it's whipped there, you cannot you can pull it out completely and but you can still put this one in and when you close it it still have the, the soft shackle knot idea i also marked here where we need to put it around the chain and the reason for that for for marking it here is that th this knot must be off center so this is what we mean by off center so that it actually works and um, if if it's like that it might get undone the knot might get undone so you want it to be something like this this is why I've got this mark here so that if we if we make it a complete knot it is like this about my arm length <laughs> so this is the idea so it, it's not completed you take the mark that you make 
so that you know you're going to be off center you wrap it around this is the chain of the anchor you wrap it around and bring it down through there wrap it around again and put it through there again and try to ensure that the mark is still in the, in the middle now you can see on the other side it's kind of like off center so this we will put through the the bridle um, and then if it's through the bridle just put it through there close the soft shackle and then the bridle is hooked onto the chain so this is the restrictor knot so this will be through the bridle and you can see you can really really pull hard and the bridle will not be able to to move so the bridle is is hooked onto this side here and this is around the chain Changing a lot. So I'm letting out the 10 meters. Okay, I think that is the 10 meters. Whoa! Now I'm going to go slowly backwards with 25 meters now. Ooh, slowly, slowly, slowly. And keep the bow into the wind. Or at least keep the bow towards the, the chain, <laughs> to the, the anchor. Sure. The current is really playing havoc here. Okay. Starting to move backwards again. 0.6 knots. I think I feel it. I think I feel it. Let me go check it. Okay. I'm just going to bring the chain a little bit in. And the reason is the chain is hanging at the bottom, it can get snagged. So I don't want too much chain there, but it has to be enough not to pull here, but pull on a bridle. Okay, I think that is it. I'm going to set the anchor now. Okay, so set the anchor. We got enough bridle and enough chain. Slowly pick up speed. Okay. We're not moving. I think we're good. Okay. So I drop the revs. This will go forward. I'm going to put in reverse a little bit to just break the forward momentum. Because what will happen is the chain will again drop and as it drops it pull scissor forward and that momentum can cause it a bridle or chain or whatever gets snagged not the way you want okay I think we could and that's how you do it so if you have a better idea please comment below because it's my first time being solo <laughs> Ooh, and it is Ah, it's nerve-wracking. Okay, 31. Now I need to go and set the alarm. I'm switching off this, switching off that. OK. 
Okay, that's it, folks. Let me go set the alarm and and then check how we swing. Also, in relation to that guy, <laughs> let's respect him. Yeah, look good. Okay, backing up this. Make sure it's good. Now for the anchor alarm. And the anchor alarm is actually pretty straightforward. Just switch on. Now you can see who we've been here before. Oh my golly gosh, goodness. I need to put a radius. We've got 30 meters. So I'm going to say 0, 0, 40. Done. Now here's the problem because we've been here before. You can see all those. Oh, can you see? Such a glare. So we've been here before. And that makes it now very difficult to find out where our spot is. Edit the norm area. Move. Move center. Okay. That looks better. Now this is where the problem gets. The problem actually starts. I'm going to guess this. So maybe later today when the wind is turning us, it will go off. And then I need to readjust until I got the right center. But at least... If we do move out of the circle, it will warn me. So that's the anchor alarm. So please comment down below. If you guys think of a better way of anchoring and especially the lifting of the anchor, because that is a more critical one than actually dropping the anchor. I think the critical one with the dropping of the anchor is only when you put your hands in there, in the anchor locker to actually tie the the bridal look okay that's it